Hello, everybody. Welcome to Norton live streams. I hope everybody's uh, very well. So this is a this live stream is a series part of a series of live streams we're doing here at, uh, at Norton Abraces. In case you haven't uh, seen these before, you can catch them on our YouTube channel, which is a Norton E M E A YouTube channel. So you can look at all the live streams we've been doing before because we record every session. So if you've missed one, please have a look and catch up with what we've uh, what we've done before. Uh, these live streams will take place uh, every second Friday of the month, one at uh, uh, 11.30 Central European time in the morning, and then in the afternoon at 1.30 Central European time. So uh, please, uh, if you like this one, please join us for, for, the, for the rest of them. Uh, first of all, before we start off, there's a little tool on Microsoft Teams where you can uh, translate what I'm saying into your local language, which is called the closed captions function how to activate the subtitles on the screen now. So you just click on the little gear in the bottom, and then you can choose uh, to have the translation of what I'm speaking, the words I'm talking, into your local language. So just to potentially make it a little bit uh, easier for you to understand what I'm saying, maybe even English is an option, which would be quite handy for some as well. Uh, so yes, today we're going to be looking how best to remove uh, scale from uh, carbon steel uh, like this uh, item here. But before we do that, I think it's best to introduce uh, a little bit about myself and who I am. And my colleague will be joining us on the, on the live stream today. So, so I'm Paul Gray. I'm an application engineer for, for Sangoban. Uh, I've worked for Sangoban for quite a few years, as you can see on there, 18 in total. But I've had 30 years experience in, in the manufacturing industry, in, uh, in uh, engineering. And uh, my colleague, Robin Cook, would you like to introduce yourself, Robin? Good morning, Paul. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, Good morning. Uh, I've uh, 30, uh, more than 30 years of ex abrasive experience uh, in a wide variety of different fields, but particularly on the non-woven abrasive, the finishing end of the uh, the processes. So, looking very handsome there in the uh, in the photo there, Robin, as well. Thank you very much, Paul. <laughs> Pleasure. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, ourselves. It'll be me and Robin talking to you for the next uh, 30 minutes. So. We're going to be going through a lot of a lot of different products for for carbon steel, uh, so scale removal on carbon steel uh, on this on this stream. Uh, but I think best uh, to talk to you exactly what is scale and why do we need to remove scale? What's what what is this application? Why do our our, our customers for abrasive products need to take scale off off carbon steel? So we'll just go through a few short slides just to explain and give the bit of background to this uh, to this uh, demo. So first of all, Robin, what is scale? Wow, Paul. <laughs> you know, it's, it, I, I'm, I'm tripping Robin up there, but, it, but scale is, is a common uh, surface we find on, on carbon steel. So we, we know it more as, uh, as mill scale. So it's actually a, a mixed uh, oxides that are formed on the, the, the carbon steel during the, the hot rolling process. So when we actually uh, roll the steel down to a certain thickness or the required thickness, it always ends up with this uh, scale black, a bluey black uh, surface on there. Uh, it's quite a thin layer, about 0.1 millimeter thick generally. It can be thicker depending on the, the size of the steel and, the, and the, the type of carbon steel because there are many types of carbon steel. And it does actually give a bit of a bonus to, to steel when it comes out of the plant because it actually protects the surface of the steel. So uh, if it was, if it still didn't have this scale on, it would be rusty pretty straight, pretty much straight away due to the atmospheric conditions or the moisture in the air. It would go very rusty straight away. So it does protect it very well, unless it's damaged. If it's damaged, uh, if the scale has a hole in it, it obviously will, will rust. So it does serve a purpose when it comes from, uh, from the plant. And um, um, so here today is to, to, to discover why do we actually need to remove it? Well, the reason is, as it says here, it can't be painted. If you paint onto scale, it will flake off. There's no way of painting onto scale without that happening. So if you're going to paint carbon steel, which you do have to paint carbon steel or galvanize or form some kind of protective layer to stop it rusting, you must remove the scale before you, uh, you do that. It's also very difficult to weld carbon steel. You can do it, uh, especially on lighter uh, gauge steel, so very thin st steel, uh, and if the steel is not going to be taking a lot of strain or pressure, it's possible to put a, a MIG weld through scale. Not very easy to do, and you won't get a very tidy weld either, but it is possible. But when you get 
thicker gauge steel, as you can see on the photo here, it's difficult to weld. Once you have welded it, it's quite easy for that weld to snap off. So it's not a strong, uh, strong formed, or it doesn't penetrate deep enough into the, into the material to, uh, uh, to make it stick properly. Uh, and carbon steel, it, it, I'm trying to say this is a very, very common application because, because carbon steel is counts for 70% of, uh, of the steel market. So it really is a, a very, very big application. And it's a, a big problem for every uh, fabrication company who are making products out of carbon steel. So it's a, it's a real life application. So how can it be removed? Several different ways listed here. Uh, you can do, you can use a flame cleaning. So what I mean by flame cleaning is oxyacetylene torch or something like this to actually burn off the carbon steel, uh, sorry, burn off the scale from the carbon steel. Uh, obviously that's not ideal because you know, you're, you're taking a hot torch into the, into the workshop and, uh, and burning away. And it also leaves a burnt charred finish on your carbon steel, which is not ideal and probably has to be cleaned up as well. Uh, we can pickle, uh, which is an, a corrosive, uh, acid that can be applied to the surface uh, that does a very good job at cleaning up per uh, scale but obviously you have the issue of having a corrosive substance in the factory which is never ideal and not really something you want on your shop floor or abrasive blasting is another way of cleaning carbon steel from sorry I can't keep saying carbon steel from your scale scale for your carbon steel uh, so that what I mean is by blasting your uh, structure or components with an abrasive media Obviously, this is very effective and very quick to do, but uh, it must be done in a, a cupboard or a container or a specific cleaning area because it shoots a lot, of, uh, a lot of abrasive media everywhere. So it's very, very dirty and dusty. So it cannot be done in situ in the middle of the factory. So this is why we're going to show you uh, how we, this can be done quickly and efficiently today with abrasive products on, uh, on a tool such as an angle grinder. So here we have the list of the products we're going to go through today for scale removal. There's six in total. Uh, we're going to start, uh, uh, not necessarily in this order we've got on the screen here, but there's, uh, we've got grinding discs, we've got rapid strip discs, wire brushes, uh, fiber discs, and some flat discs. So this, these products are what we see commonly used in the market for this scale stripping uh, application. Uh, and we will go through the features and benefits of why one is better than the other at the job or the finish that is left uh, from using the, 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 the products where that kind of fits into, into the market. They will all do uh, a reasonable job of scale material, but some will be better than others, depending what your component is, uh, you know, the end use of your component and the requirements of, uh, of the finish on, uh, on the product. So it, everything okay there, Robin? You, you miss anything? Just to sum up there, Paul, what you're saying, this is an everyday occurrence, as you mentioned, for uh, for a lot of metal fabricators. It's a problem they face every day, and we're going to talk about how to remove it using one of the most popular power tools uh, around for the uh, for the, the, the operators. Yeah, exactly, Robin. The right angle grinder, it's a very, very versatile tool and uh, used every in every fabrication shop. Uh, very wide, widespread use of this. And uh, yeah, so... First of all, we'll have a look at the, uh, at the component uh, we're going to be uh, grinding today. So this is uh, a piece of carbon steel we have here. You can see it's got this bluey uh, black finish on there, which is, uh, which is the scale uh, that we need to remove. And what we're going to do, we're going to use each of the products to take this scale off. Uh, we're going to time how long it takes to do that. And also we're going to look at this re the, re the, the surface finish that we, we leave behind. And again, like I said before, where that would... Uh, where that would suit uh, the operator or the uh, or the company that are doing the operation. Okay. Um, one thing about scale is it's it's a bit of a strange uh, strange beast to be honest with you. It uh, when we're taking or removing scale from uh, carbon steel has a tendency to stick to the abrasive that you're you're using, so it can clog. So that will be one of the things we're looking out for today. Is the clogging uh, factor on, on the products. Uh, but also one of the strange things about scale, when it's fresh from the factory, it's actually hard. It's really, really hard. And that's, it's, if, you're, if you're ordering fresh steel from, from, the, from the rolling mill into your factory, this is when it's gonna be the toughest time to remove scale. It's gonna be really hard and really tough to remove, but you can actually weather uh, uh, scale. So if you leave it outside or uh, on a shelf for, for a period of time, 
it, uh, it actually gets softer with age. It uh, absorbs moisture and it can start to get a little bit easier to move. There's a little tip to begin is to, if you can, if you're not using this steel straight away, I know that the price of steel is very high right now, so uh, you probably don't stock as much as normal. But if you, if you do leave it uh, on the side for a little while, it will get progressively easier to remove as, uh, as it ages. So a little, little tip there. Right, let's move on to the products in front of us here. If we can have a look at that, Martin, thank you very much. We've got Martin Gresol today on the, on the cameras doing a fine job as, uh, as always. Uh, right, so we're going to start from the left-hand side here where we've got our Norton Quantum uh, 3 uh, LCG uh, grinding disc. Uh, I'll go through all these products very quickly and then when we do each one after the other, I'll talk about the features and benefits of these products a little bit more. We, we, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, Martin's just reminded me when I'm on camera, everything's reversed round. So, yeah, that's the, that's the right-hand side, yeah? <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, we're then going to move on to the Norton Extreme flap disc, a nice uh, zirconia flap disc that we have in our range. We're then going to move on to our Blaze X uh, F970 fiber discs, see how that performs on the job. We then move on to our Blaze uh, rapid strip uh, non-woven uh, discs. We will then look at our similar product to the Blaze, but actually a silicon carbide version of a rapid strip product. And then we'll have a look how wire brushes do the job. On the left-hand side, right, Martin? Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, we'll get the carbon steel in the vise, first of all. Get that nice and tight up, and we are in. So we'll start with product, uh, product number one, which is our uh, Norton Quantum uh, LCG uh, grinding disc. Now, this is one of the new products from, uh, from uh, Norton Abrasives. LCG means light comfort grinding. It's a bit of a different uh, uh, grinding product, uh, with it being only three millimeters thick. So what that does is it, uh, it makes the disc lighter to use. It makes it more comfortable to use than a conventional seven millimeter disc. But what it also does, it makes it really, really aggressive. So when we're, we're taking off the scale, it will do it extremely quickly. Uh, also, with it being our Quantum, our Quantum 3, it has our unique uh, ceramic grain in here. So it's really good at getting through hard, uh, hard surfaces such as this scale we're trying to take off here. So high performance uh, grinding disc. For a, for a demanding job. Uh, so let's get that mounted on the tool. So today I'm using a, a Bosch grinder. It's quite a powerful tool. Uh, most tool grinders in the market we see are around about, uh, depending what country you're into on it, to, to be honest, it does vary. UK around a thousand watts. Uh, the rest of Europe a little bit more powerful. This is actually a 1.7 uh, kilowatts, so 1700 watt machine. So it's a bit of a monster. So uh, get that disc nice and mounted on there. I'll switch the power on because never change the abrasive on your grinder when your power is switched on. Always switch the power off before you start messing around with the tool at the end on the flanges, etc. Okay, so we're ready to go. I, I've got my safety gear on, flame-proof overalls. So I've got uh, my safety boots, gloves, uh, ear defenders. Just need to put on my face mask while I'm doing the grinding so I don't get any sparks in my eyes. So we're all ready and safe to go. So as I said, I'm going to time this. So each time I uh, start off, I'm going to set the timer off and I'm going to start grinding and stop. And we'll record the time it takes uh, for each of these products to take off all of this layer of, uh, of scale. Anything to add, Robin? Nope. I think we're all looking forward to you setting off, Paul. Thanks very much. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go. Okay, so as Paul explained here, this is going to act extremely fast in removing that layer of scale uh, benefit as Paul mentioned again of the uh, of the, the ceramic grain content within this thin veal disc uh, but what we're going to look at and compare and contrast is the uh, is, is the finish and also the loading aspect of, of each of the products but this as you can see has been extremely fast to get rid of that scale layer And they say quite comfortable to use, to be honest with you. When you're using grinding discs like that, you often get uh, quite a bit of, uh, of vibration. But uh, with a light comfort grinding, it's uh, it's really, really uh, nice product to use. And uh, it doesn't feed back so much as uh, bigger, harder discs. So that was 28 seconds. Not bad, to be honest. And uh, if you have a look at the finish there on the camera, I'm not sure you can see uh, see that on the camera. It's difficult to pick up a surface finish on a, 
on a video camera angle. We could see that when you were grinding, Paul, and we'll just, I just mentioned the fact that uh, the, the, the grind lines appearing in there. Uh, it's very yeah. quick, very comfortable to use, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, but we've also got an eye on the end process for the for the fabricator as well. So Of course, yeah. I mean, it, it, the, the grinding is ideal uh, for, for doing it very, very quickly. As you can see, it's a uh, uh, surface is uh, it's pretty rough. But when you're trying to put, get an area on a carbon steel to where you're going to weld, uh, so you're going to cover that area in weld, the finish doesn't really matter. So a perfect product for beveling uh, the edge of the carbon steel before you weld. The reason you bevel, so you make sure you get the surface uh, penetration of, uh, of the welded media to make sure the weld's as strong as it possibly can be. So not a great finish, but perfectly good when you're going to put weld over, over the top of it. Right, next product. Oh, sorry, Robin. So ideal for one set of customers, like you just mentioned, Paul, right? Exactly, mate. Exactly. Uh, OK, so next uh, next product we're looking at is our Norton Extreme uh, R860 uh, flat disc. Uh, this is a new product from from Norton, probably the best zirconia disc we've uh, we've ever produced, uh, to be honest with you. It's a very nice product to use. Maximum amount of flaps you can possibly put on a, on a flat disc uh, to give it the highest performance and the longest life possible. This is grit 40, again, because we want to uh, get the scale off as quick as possible. So 100% zirconia in this product. And uh, it's, as I say, our highest performance zirconia product we've ever made here at Norton. So it's a really nice product. Also, when we use uh, flat discs, they're very comfortable to use. So we get much less vibration on a flat disc than we do on, uh, on a, a grinding wheel uh, or a grinding disc. Uh, but it does relatively the, the same job. But uh, how fast? How fast is zirconia going to work on uh, carbon steel scale. We shall see. Let's get the uh, component in the vise. Then I'll remember to switch the tool back on, which is one of my party tricks, not remembering to do that. And we can go again. Right, let me zero. And we can start. So again, this product will act fast, as Paul mentioned. Uh, you have the, the benefit here of a very popular product used in a lot of fabrication uh, shops for a wide variety of uh, materials, not just carbon steel. So the, there's a versatility and a, a flexibility across different products to, to be used on here with the, with, the, uh, uh, with the flap disc. But again, very quick and perhaps not as rough. We'll see in a second, but perhaps not as rough a finish as the, as the, uh, the earlier uh, grinding disc. Exactly, Robin. So you can see there, 25 seconds for that. So a little bit quicker than the uh, the grinding disc. And as I say before, a little bit more more comfortable. Finish, yeah, I think you can see on the camera, uh, this is a much brighter finish than the, the grinding disc. So again, we can remove quite a bit of material with a flat disc. It's uh, it's pretty aggressive for uh, taking that off. Nearly as, uh, it's a little bit quicker than a grinding disc on this application, uh, but it does leave a nicer finish. If we look quickly at the surface of the grinding disc, Martin, if you can just go back to the close-up camera there, please. Um, remember me sp speaking earlier about the, the way scale sticks onto the surface. You can see on that disc, we've got a blackened area uh, around there on, on the flaps. That tells me um, potentially we could run into a problem after a couple of minutes of, uh, of, uh, of grinding with that disc. Uh, that's called loading. That's where we are. The, car, uh, the scale from the carbon steel is actually sticking to the, uh, to the product. Uh, that will continue possibly to get, uh, to get worse uh, because we're not breaking down the flaps on the flap disc anymore. We're, we're going to increase the amount of loading. So first few minutes of use, probably be very, very, very effective. Uh, uh, and as you continue to use it, the scale removing ability will probably drop, uh, drop away a little bit and you'll start to get a little bit uh, maybe frustrated with it. But, as I say, if, as long as you can break through the flaps, you'll get yourself a, a fresh layer underneath and keep uh, keep using this product. But uh, but again, no, nice product, comfortable and very quick to take off uh, off the scale. Um, another product we see in the market where people are taking off scale is a, is a fiber disc. So we'll have here our uh, Blaze X uh, F970 uh, ceramic uh, fiber disc. Okay, so. Here again, 100% ceramic uh, grain on this product. And the reason I sometimes like a fiber disc rather than a flat disc for scale removal is 
if I load this disc up, it doesn't matter so much. It's much more, yeah, it's cheaper to buy. Uh, if I load it up full of the scale, maybe it doesn't matter so much. So I can, I can dispose of the disc and, and, and put another one on my, on my grinder. But what I do like about this disc is its ability to, to bend, okay? Is the fact it's going to give us a much flatter finish than it would with a, with a conventional flat disc. With a flat disc or a grinding disc, you see, they're quite hard. And what we can do is we can end up making a bit of a groove in the stainless steel or stain the carbon steel when we're, we're grinding away on it. Uh, but with a, with, a, with a fiber disc, we can actually get some compression on the disc. So we get a flatter and more uniform, uh, uniform finish on there. So let's get the uh, fiber disc onto the uh, grinder. I need to use a special uh, fiber disc backing plate on here. So you always use uh, a backing plate when you're using a fiber, fiber disc. That's a nice way to put it, Robin. Yeah, you're gonna have a bigger footprint with the with a fiber disc than you do get with uh, with a uh, a flat disc. So, with that bigger footprint and a powerful tool like this, it'll have uh, one effect. It will do it much quicker. I hope, but we will find out now. But yeah, thank you for that, Robin. That's quite true. Let's get the uh, component in the vise again. Tighten him up, and we can see how it goes. Same angle as you do with. Uh, uh, a, a flat disc, 15 degrees is what we need. Um, let's see how fast it is. So as mentioned, um, a, a little bit more uh, footprint contact area between the uh, uh, the abrasive and the, and the component. Uh, and you can see that's shown in the, the, the quantity of sparks uh, and also the speed of uh, removal there. Yeah, rapid, yeah, really quick. So that was 18 seconds. So we can see, uh, and you could hear also that that was much more comfortable. So 18 seconds to remove the carbon steel. That's pretty, pretty quick, to be honest with you. Let's just turn off the grinder. But I think you can see a nice finish, very similar to the flap disc, maybe a little bit more coarse uh, than the flap disc, not as coarse as the grinding disc, but just look at the fiber disc. This is what the problem is with fiber, is it is a mono layer abrasive, so we do get a lot of the, uh, of the scale sticking to the product. So that's lying over the top of the abrasive grains. So it's a cheap and effective way to get the scale off, but it's not gonna be a long life, uh, a life product for you, which means you're gonna have uh, more tool changes essentially you're going to be using more product and stopping to change the product uh, a lot more often than you would with uh, a flat disc or a uh, a grinding disc or any of these other products here but uh, still very quick job and a, and a very nice uh, nice finish as well and all of these three products the grinding disc the flat disc and the fiber disc these will also bevel your product so again if you need to take off the edge of the steel so you can get well penetration in all of these have great uh, material removal capabilities, okay? So we're gonna move over to the next product uh, in the family of products uh, we have on the table here, which is our Blaze Rapid Strip. We've highlighted this product before on a few of our live streams. It's one of our best-selling uh, non-woven products uh, uh, for the angle grinder. We call it our Norton Blaze Rapid Strip, and it purely is for stripping and cleaning, rust, paint, scale, Anything you don't want on the surface of your uh, carbon steel, stainless steel, no matter what it is, it will remove it very, very quickly. Nice and open structure on here. So you can see all the little holes inside here. And that will help us with uh, the, pro the point we've been discussing earlier, loading, all right? Because it has a lot of these holes in here, it's enabling the, the, the scale that's sticking to the product to either be ejected or to go inside the disc. So therefore it's gonna cause or should cause less of a problem and the products will keep working at more or less the same rate it does uh, from the from from the off uh, so we get a bit more consistency from uh, from this product 100 percent ceramic grain in here again because uh, again state scale is very hard hard to remove so we need sort of an abrasive with a bit of beef behind it to be able to uh, to be able to take off this product one of your favorite products as well robin right yeah, it's a nice, uh, not 100% ceramic, but it's a nice blend of ceramic grains and other grains that uh, work really well on non-woven type applications. 
Just get that on the grinder. A little bit tricky with these gloves on sometimes. So we're on. So as Paul's mentioned, uh, selection choice can be driven by a variety of different circumstances. So it may well be that it's driven by the, the range of other tasks that you might want to achieve with, with both carbon steel or any other steel that you're working with in the fabrication shop. Exactly right. And, and how much you've got to do, you know, how big is the area that, uh, that you need to, to remove? If you've got a huge amount to do, you want to do it as quick as possible because it's not a fun application. OK, so uh, let's go. I've reset the timer, got the product on the grinder, the power's on. Let's, uh, let's see what we do with the uh, Blaze uh, Rapid Strip. So here the product is, has the ability to be very uh, light, comfortable to, to use. You can see it's actually starting to hug the, uh, the, 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 contour, well, the, the flatness of the, the surface. It's been extremely quick. And again, here we've got uh, one view on the, the secondary processes for the fabricator, i.e. The, the need to perhaps uh, prepare the surface later on or paint. Exactly, that's a really good point raised there, Robin. So 18 seconds, uh, same speed as the uh, the Blaze uh, fiber, uh, but I think um, you can see on this picture, the finish is just that bit better than, uh, than any of the products so far. It's nice, it's flat, uh, and as Robin just alluded to, this uh, scratch we've left behind there is absolutely perfect uh, finish for, for paint. So you'll be able to paint this with powder coat or spray paint, the paint has a key to adhere to the surface, which is really important. You can't paint polished steel because it will just chip off very quickly. You need a scratch to be able to get the paint to stick on. Um, but it's, it's, it's really nice. There's no damage to the surface. We haven't uh, gouged or, or dented it anywhere with the product. And also, you can see, yeah, we've got some loading on the surface, but that will not affect the performance of the disc because it will get pushed into the material or be ejected from the material as the material wears away. Hardly taken anything off uh, off the life of the disc, so it's uh, it's looking like a good uh, a good contender so far. Um, yeah, and as I say, one of Robin's uh, favourite products is always talking about it, especially at weekends. Anyway, right, let's get that on there. Base uh, base for rapid strip. Now we're going to move on to its uh, brother in the family of uh, stripping discs. We're going to use our rapid strip silicon carbide product. Okay, so. Instead, it's exactly the same structure as we have with the, uh, the Blaze Rapid Strip. There's no difference with the fibres in here. The only difference is, is the grain type. Instead of ceramic grains that we have in the, the, the Blaze, in this we have our silicon carbide grain. The reason I've selected this product for scale removal is due to the fact it has silicon carbide in, so I really have picked that product on purpose. It is Silicon carbide is really, really good at getting through scale uh, on all sorts of materials due to the, the fact the grain, the silicon carbide grain is actually much sharper than any other grain, be it aluminium oxide, zirconia or ceramics. It's a much sharper, sharper grain. So that enables this silicon carbide rapid strip product to pierce through uh, even harder scales than we have here. This is relatively soft today, to be honest with you. It can really bite through uh, the scale surface and penetrate through down to the, uh, the material underneath. So let's just get this on the disc. All these products, by the way, I don't have to change the speed of the grinder. Whatever product we have here, they're all rated to run over 11,000 RPM, which is generally the standard speed of these tools. Not every Certainly rapid strip product we see in the market from our competitors is rated at uh, as be able to run at full speed on a grinder. So be aware of that. Always check your your speed rating on the on the disc before you mount it. So again, all these products are certified to run over uh, 11,000 uh, RPM. Right, let's reset the timer. Got the material in the vise. Let's see how well this uh, silicon carbide product does. Turn the power on going to be much quicker. <laughs> so here we've got the benefit of the sharp silicon carbide grain combined with the open structure uh, on the on, or open fiber structure. 
Um, so that's allowing the uh, the debris to escape very quickly. But again, you're getting the benefit of the really sharp grain, and again with a view to the to the finish uh, or the next step in the in the process for the fabricator. Interesting there, Robin. 14 seconds. So fastest product so far for uh, for scale removal, which is uh, exactly what I expected to be honest with you. Uh, the the blaze is really good at rust removal and uh, paint removal and all these kind of things. But the, the silicon carbide wrapper strip really does uh, excel on uh, on scale removal. Again, very similar foot surface than the uh, the wrapper strip blaze. There's not a lot of difference between the visual aspect of these two pieces of steel. And you can see on the disc, uh, it's it's same kind of loading. It's more difficult to see on the black disc because uh, scale is black and the disc is black. But uh, again, very long life product for for this kind of application these products both the rapid strip and the and the blaze they're not going to be the product you use for beveling or taking off the sharp edge of the steel they will withstand it of course if you if you lose light pressure but if you need to remove some material for, for your welding purposes or rounding off something edge edge blending or, or whatever else they are not the ideal product for that so you need to make sure you use the product for the application it's intended so these are for stripping the flat surfaces, contours, etc. If you did need to remove some material for beveling, then we need to start, you know, product one, two, and three, the, the quantum grinding, the flat disc and the fiber disc. But if it's flat surfaces, contour surfaces that you need to take the scale off, these are certainly high performance products so far. Last product in our group is a wire brush. We have a few, uh, a couple of different wire brushes here. We have a twist knot here and we have uh, a crimped wire brush. And as we're going to be uh, doing quite an aggressive application today. I'm going to try and use the twist knot and see how that does on the scale. Uh, we do see a lot of people using wire brushes on scale, and we'll, we'll see how it does today, but not entirely confident with these on, uh, versus the abrasives. They probably will be slower, but certainly the lifetime will be much, uh, much greater. Um, the crimped, it's a little bit softer, as you can see. You know, I can move these wires around in here. so. Maybe for applications on softer materials or not so aggressive applications or aluminium, these are, it'll give a better finish and less aggression. But today we want to be nice and fast. We'll, we use this aggressive uh, thick wire twist knot brush for, for maximum, uh, maximum speed. Right, let's get these on the tool again. Take off the back flange. All these wire brushes come with a handy M14 thread so we can just wind them on the tool really quickly without any backup pads, etc. without even using the locking nut of the, of the grinder either. It's uh, rapid to get on there. Last piece of uh, carbon steel, get him in the vise. And again, no problem on the speed, we can use it on maximum speed, but let's see how it does. Don't forget your power. You're right, Robin. Don't forget the power. It's a common theme every stream we do is me forgetting to turn the grinder on and there. Uh, not used to using it, maybe, but thank you. Right, let's get him on. Yeah, uh, I, I, again, as Paul mentioned, uh, you have the, the, the benefit here of a, a product which is uh, going to last a long, long time, um, hard wearing because of the, the structure of it, uh, but maybe a little bit slower to achieve uh, what you want to try and do in comparison to the uh, the other products. It's not going to be slow. Uh, it's still going to work very well and to do what you want to do, maybe with a little less spark, as you can see, compared to the other products. Um, but uh, again, the lifetime might be your uh, your main point here. If you're doing a lot of uh, this type of work, uh, the, 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 the cup, the, sorry, the wire brush might be the, the, the optimal choice. Yeah, it, to be honest, the wire brushes, as you saw, they're not so comfortable to use. They do grab on an edge quite quite easily, and uh, uh, they're not as definitely nowhere near as comf comfortable to use as the other products. Um, that took 42 seconds to take off, but to be honest, I haven't quite got through the scale. Um, you can see on here, it's it's taken the surface layer off, but there's still a layer of scale remaining. So I think the wire brushes, they're, they're very good at dirty steel, so steel that's covered in oil and grime, uh, that's where we really see uh, these wire brushes doing extremely well. But even with a bit of pressure, what I was applying there, it just doesn't quite have the bite to get through uh, carbon, uh, carbon steel scale. 
So for cleaning up oily, dirty parts or painted parts, they're perfect for the long life of it. But in this scale application, not quite got the, the, the right amount of bite, uh, a bite to get through there. OK, so I think we can come back out to a wide shot. Please, Mark, thank you very much. So again, six products here. They all do a job uh, of, of sorts on, on scale removal. But I think we can look by far the quickest was our uh, rapid strip silicon carbide product, followed closely by the rapid strip blaze product and then our coated abrasive uh, products uh, in second and our grinding disc, uh, not in last place, but uh, very close in time, uh, but uh, just a rougher finish. So if you're, if you're removing scale and uh, there's no regard for the surface finish, you want a long life product, uh, so that wherever your scale removed is gonna be hidden, then my product of choice would probably be the Quantum 3 grinding disc because it takes it off really quick and it's going to have the longest life out of uh, most of the products here. Uh, it does the job really quickly. So if you can't see the area where the scale is going to be removed, quantum grinding without a doubt. Um, next one for lifetime, I think, would probably be the flap disc. Uh, but that, that will, the performance of that, as I said, will drop off after a, after a minute or so. It will do a great job uh, until it starts to, uh, starts to load up, as you see here and then the performance will drop off, uh, off a little bit. Um, speed, you know, the, the second product, the fiber disc, uh, the third product, should I say, the fiber disc. Again, really rapid, uh, but we are seeing problems with uh, loading. It's a cheap method of taking off scale because of the cost of the fiber disc is probably the, the least expensive product of the six we have here today. Uh, so it's a more disposable product, but uh, it is pretty quick and quite comfortable to do and will remove uh, material, bevel, etc. if required, like the rest of the products here. Um, the Rapid Strip Blaze, uh, again, very quick, similar speed to the, the fiber disc, uh, really quick, uh, very, very comfortable to use. You can't remove material with it, so you're not going to take off uh, edges or round edges with the product. It's really for the flat or contoured surfaces, but Nice and comfortable to use, non-clogging, uh, fast and aggressive. Um, the Rapid Strip uh, Silicon Carbide, I think my favorite product today. Again, as comfortable as the Rapid Strip Blaze, a little bit faster due to that sharp Silicon Carbide uh, abrasive we've got in there and does a very nice job leaving a nice key uh, for, for the paint that you'll need to apply after that. And then we have the, the brush at the end, not quite capable to get through the scale, uh, maybe more apt for dirty uh, bits of steel with oil or paint or, or debris that needs to be removed from, uh, from, from the surfaces. So there we have it. I think uh, by far the standout products for me today are probably uh, this and uh, this and probably our quantum grinding disc. So if I'm removing scale, I want to take off loads of material. It doesn't matter. Quantum grinding disc. If I want to respect the surface a little bit, it'll be either one of these... Uh, rapid strip uh, strip products uh, you anything to add there robin yeah so just uh, just to add to that paul i think the products that we saw on the right hand side you're absolutely right the, the your selection choice is is driven by perhaps the the versatility of the disc so you may need those discs for other tasks and applications around the, uh, the fabrication process. Yeah. So where finish isn't necessarily the uh, the objective at the end, then as you mentioned, uh, the discs on the right hand side are going to be the, the, the better choice. But uh, the black rapid strips, as we all saw there, we were all very impressed with that. The black rapid strip the silicon carbide version, I hardly had an, enough time uh, to comment about the product <laughs> before you were you were finished with that. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, selection choice can be driven by a lot of things, but the versatility of the uh, of the of the disc on other tasks, um, the finish uh, required, uh, and also the cost of the of the product is is an important factor too. All important factors, Robin. And uh, well, well, a well, good point made about the versatility of the uh, versatility of the disc, because these products can be used for many many different tasks around the workshop, depending what your your customer is doing. OK, so I think we're pretty much out of time for this uh, live stream today. Um, don't forget to join us uh, this afternoon at 1.30 Central European time for our, our next stream um, where we'll be looking at achieving a number four finish with, uh, with uh, belts on a backstand machine. Uh, for those of you who are watching us uh, on the recorded session on YouTube, thanks for joining us. Check out our other live streams that are recorded on YouTube too on the Norton EMEA uh, 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 YouTube channel. 
Uh, we'll see you uh, again later on another live stream. Goodbye.